Simone doesn't take long showering down. Though the heated tub is tempting, she'd rather get to familiarising herself with the ship as soon as possible. If an emergency is to happen sooner than later, it would suck not knowing where the fuck to go. Plus, scrubbing off the gunk off her jacket, trousers and boots will take much more time. In fact, the heated tub may turn out to be a perfectly suitable to drench her clothes in for a wash. Though as she looks at the haphazardly folded bundle, she changes her mind last minute. She opens the door to the hallway and covers a hand to her mouth. Yo! The call from a completely different section of the ship carries its way all the way to the bridge. Chuck perks up. Oh, oh no. She turns away from Chocknuck and with a zippy cali speed runs out and up to the facility's hallway. Seeing the bare Terran leaning out of the doorframe to the spa, Oh dear, what's wrong? Were you actually injured in the fight? Did any core make it on board? She chirps in a panic. Nah, I was just wondering if there's a place where I can clean my clothes. I was going to use the tub here, but it just occurred to me that you guys may not appreciate that so much. The shaken Callie blankly stares at the nonchalant Terran, then wordlessly points with a lower appendage to the door just across from where the Terran currently stands. A clear sign next to it reads, Uniform Washroom. Simone looks at the sign and blinks. Ah, thanks. She flashes the Callie a thumbs up. Is... is that all? Chuck asks. I think so. I mean, after I jump into my shirt and shorts, a tour around this place would be good. Simone says, as she pops her neck, causing Chuck to reflexively step back. Of course, um... Do you intend on shouting whenever you need anything? Because you can just con me through my lens. She points out to her eye gear. I'm not sure if my heart can take a lot of that, to be honest. It's now where the Terran's face changes colour to an aggressive red. Oh no, I've got an anger to her. Chuck fears, as she raises her hands up, hoping to calm the Terran. Ah, oh, shit, yeah, my bad. I don't have a communicator, too much of a liability back at the station. You know, with all the location tracing, intercepting, jamming, self-destructing, etc. Oh, well, I'd be happy to issue a communicator on a closed network with my lens and the ship. It's not foolproof, but better than... shouting? To Chuck's great relief, the Terran smiles and nods. Yeah, this gig will be pretty dependent on clear communication. I'll take what you can give me, Simone agrees. Chuck's body finally relaxes and she allows herself to breathe. Her eyes glance down, suddenly, taking in what the Terran's body looks like. Her lower appendages scratch at the sides of her face from the sight. Oh, you poor thing. She can't help but chirp. Simone looks down bemused. Hey, I work hard keeping this in top shape. Best I can do with limited space and artificial protein rations. Sure, I treat myself with drinks and the cocoa slab pie more than I should, but nobody's perfect. Go on, take a feel. Simone leans down, flexing her arm. Chuck slowly approaches and reaches around the presented appendage to the torso side, where a long, thick, nasty scar rests in the ribcage. One of the worst, but certainly not the only battle wound decorating Simone's skin. You've been through a lot. I don't think I can imagine surviving anything like this, the Cali says softly. Simone stands back up straight, once again red in the face. Uh, yeah, did the stitches myself on that one. Probably why it looks as gnarly as it does, to be honest, but hey, battle scars are cool. It's all good, just a part of being what I am, is what we're built for. Big, tough, uh, death order, remember? She bares her teeth in a reassuring smile. Do Terrans actually feel pain? I'm having a difficult time not considering many of those wounds as anything but fatal. Uh, yep, you bet we do, but we have adrenaline and shit to help with that. You have a lens, I'm sure there's plenty of Terran interviews explaining the specifics on the net. So, how about you go get one of those communicators and I'll sort out my clothes. Maybe back here? Great! No waiting for a reply, Simone quickly backs away and closes the door. Chuck stands there in silence for a moment. I offended her, she rationalises sorrowfully, before walking down the hall to retrieve the communicator from the bridge. On the other side of the door, Simone repeatedly taps her forehead against it, frustrated. Stupid, 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 she scolds herself. You're not dealing with other Terrans here. Pay more attention to what you do. You're a danger to these folks otherwise. Focus. After the internal pep talk, she turns around and scoops up her still-soiled clothes and makes her way to the uniform washroom. 
pleasantly surprised to see that the large machine is top of the line. Definitely designed for bulk work. Simone gets to it, removing a strap knife before tossing the boots in. Then systematically clean out her inner jacket of its contents, making sure to organise everything on a nearby counter. After triple checking she sets the jacket into the machine, and repeats the process with her cargo trousers. Starting up the machine, she goes back to the counter and dresses herself in her workout clothes. A simple, well-worn grey t-shirt and faded red sweatshorts. She would have to walk around barefoot, but not a big deal with the lighter gravity. She then patiently stands out in the hallway for Jack's return. Luckily, it's a short wait, as the Cali trots up with a small metal box in hand. The net says this model is best for Terence. Just put it on your nipple, she chirps. My what? Simone says in amused disbelief. Chuck stops and thinks for a solid second. Uh, temple! Sorry, temple! She corrects, holding up the box. The Terran laughs and accepts the metal rectangle, clicking it open. The item inside is a small, flat, peanut-shaped device. Picking it out, Simone turns it over to see the bottom half is a dark, rubber-like material that always looks wet. Using the hand in possession of the box, she brushes away her hair, allowing a clean application upon her temple. A brief, vibrating buzz courses from the device into her skull as it bonds. Fancy, the Terran says, blinking away the lingering, sandy brain feeling. Just tap it for an open two-way communication and hold it for a more singular one-way message, Chuck informs. Simone reaches up reflexively to give it a go, but stops herself, unsure. Uh, how do I select who I want to speak with? She asks. Oh, without a lens? You can't, it's open to all in the closed network. You, Chuck Nock, and me, Chuck answers, with a bouncing nod. Gotcha. Suppose that makes sense. Simone trails off a little. I guess more private conversations will have to stay in person. Good thing I have this, then. With what Simone swears is slight excitement in the Callie's eyes. Chuck reaches into her pocket and presents a lens eyepiece. It's my spare old one. It still works perfectly fine. It's just a bit heavier and runs a few milliseconds slower due to it being an older model. Whoa, I... I can't accept that. Those things are expensive. And knowing me, I'll just break it. Simone rejects slightly. Chuck tilts her head and holds it out further. And that would be okay. Simone, this isn't just a gift out of my kindness. You saved me. Even before knowing me or what I was doing. Consider this an actual example of my gratitude. This is yours to have. Break, sell, throw away, whatever. Take it. She chirps firmly. Impressed by this unassuming alien's strong assurance, Simone nods and accepts the lens. Gently holding it in her hand like a delicate flower, she plants the lens right under the communicator, allowing it to bond in an identical manner. I, um, yeah, thanks, is all she can say. Of course, we can't have our chief of security not operating at 100%. Now, how about I show you the ship? Chuck chirps, crossing all her arms behind her back and turning around. Yeah, <clears throat> sounds good. The two walk together down the hallway out of the second level of the cargo bay. Allow me to officially welcome you to the Quip Chap, a once respectable yacht retrofitted into an even more respectable lightly armoured transport. It may not pack a punch, but it's fast for its size, Chuck announces, as they reach the railing by the stairs. I uh, hate to be the terror in the room, but what guns does she have? Uh, twin light slug cannons based on Terran design, actually. After that, we are primed with anti-missile countermeasures. So, we're not winning any straight-up fights. We just run and bug out when things start to get heated. Before things get heated, if I can help it, Chuck affirms, as she leads the Terran to the upper right hallway. The Cali points to each of the four doors. Here's the crew's quarters. My room is the back left. It's the closest to the engine, so I can actually hear a low rhythmic hum. It's very soothing. The captain has his own quarters by the bridge, so you can pick from any of these three. But, if I were to make a recommendation, in the room next to mine, you can still hear the hum. If you prefer listening to the ship sounds, I mean. I don't know. Would you be comfortable with a Terran being a wall away while you sleep? I wouldn't want to stress you out. Oh, but on the contrary. I would have the chief of security merely a wall away if something were to happen. How much safer could I be? Chuck counters, with a little enthused bounce. With extreme care, Simone passed the back of Chuck's shoulder. Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do. It's very kind of you. But let's call a spade a spade here. My very presence makes you uncomfortable. It's an instinct thing, right? No shame in it. I'll just take the father's room, no problem. 
Chuck stares at the tone rather ominously. I wouldn't have recommended it if it bothered me, she chirps in a flat tone. Simone rubs at her own shoulder a little cautious of what to say. Yes, you would, because you're a really good person who wants the Death Order to feel welcome. I want Simone to feel welcome and enjoy her stay because she's a good person, Chuck argues in a defensive tone. You don't know me, Simone asserts, pointing downward at the Cali. Chuck steps up closer to Simone in sudden aggression. And you sure as clad don't know me, she proclaims with genuine venom in her words. Simone slowly raises her hands and takes a half step back for some breathing room. Immediately, Chuck sinks back, covering a hand over her mouth. Oh, I'm so sorry. That anger wasn't directed at you, I promise, just... Uh... Chuck loses her words, trying to explain herself. Just hit a nerve? Simone offers, lowering her hands. Chuck scratches the sides of her face with her lower appendages. Yes, it's a fresh wound, as it were. Uh, but that's no excuse. I apologise. Please, sleep where you would most prefer. Such a childish thing to argue about. Chuck wraps herself in her forelimbs in shame. Simone bites her cheek, thinking on what to possibly say to help this Callie understand. Look, I hurt people, even when I don't intend to. I'm really good at it. If I'm going to be working here for some time, I have to keep myself in check. Which is something I'm really bad at, she explains in a slow tempo. So I suppose what I'm asking is that you don't fight those instincts of yours. Your attempt at it means a lot, it's validating. But I need those reminders of what I am, for your safety. Does that make sense? I didn't consider that you would be wary of yourself like this. I understand your feelings and your apprehension, however... Chuck reaches out and sets a hand on Simone's arm. That makes me believe that we are even more fortunate to have you aboard. Sorry if that may be inconsiderate of me, but it's the truth. Her hand squeezes as firmly as a Cali can muster. You're right, I don't know you yet, but I want to. All the good and bad, because I believe we can be dear friends. Truly. Would you like to know something about me? Not knowing what to even begin to say, Simone nods. I hate hurting people, and seeing good people suffer needlessly even more so. But there are people that need to be hurt, and if it falls to me, I'll do it. Her tone isn't menacing as it is serious. But Simone still feels chills run down her spine. Although not a physically imposing alien, her eyes in that moment hold the weight of real power. Who the hell is this woman? Simone ponders, feeling the air temperature rise from the tension. The floor beneath the two rattles ever so subtly like a chill's shiver. Oh! Chuck now got us into FTL! Chuck chirps excitedly, changing her disposition like a light switch. A perfect time to show you the bridge! Chuck's hand lowers down Simone's arm to take hold of the Terran's paw. With an encouraging tug, Simone relents and allows the Cali to guide her down the cargo bay stairs and then through double doors at the base forward wall. A white walkway presents itself. Along the left wall are windows and a clear door marked with Med Bay. To the right is similar, but the windows are covered by shutters and the door is solid viper steel. Kitchen, mess hall, marks that door. Interesting concepts of privacy here. Simone mumbles under her breath. Another set of double doors opens, allowing the two access to the bridge. A semicircular open area with a single filled seat in the center, planted under a glowing circular hardlight projector. Chuckner sits casually, tapping away at the projected controls with his gecko like graspers. Bah! So our new chief of security is conducting her first rounds. Very good, he declares jovially. Captain, Simone addresses raising her hand in a half-hearted salute as an excuse to free it from the Cali's grip. I trust the Crip Trap is proving to be a fine vessel to your standards, the captain says, as his chair spins around to face the entirety of the ship's crew. Hard to complain, the comfort and speed of a civvy ship is a nice change of pace. Chuckner briefly analyzes the Terran, looking up and down simultaneously with both eyes. Aha! Yes, I can see it now. Military? Simone rolls her eyes and performs a rusty but well-ingrained ceremonial salute for takeoff proceedings. Her legs shift closer together, back straightens, and chin elevates. Her fist makes a spiraling circle around the front of her chest, tapping down eight times before planting itself in the center. Court martialed Lance Corporal Simone Thatcher of the Terra Marine Corps, she says in an almost mockingly serious voice. Her body relaxes and she smirks. <laughs> Haven't done that in a while. Court martialed? Chuck chirps surprised. Well, not really. They never caught me. 
Simone shrugs, retaining the smirk. What were the charges? Chucknock inquires. Chucknock? Chuck sharply whispers scoldingly. Simone waves the concern away. It's fine. I'm sure they made a long list against me, but let's just say I went against orders. Twenty-three servicemen died because of my actions. Simone states plainly. Uh, anything that should concern the safety of myself and Miss Chocolata Motaz? The captain presses. Uh, no, sir. Or at least, I highly doubt it. Simone answers with sincerity. Chucknuck locks eyes with Terran for a solid five seconds before nodding. Good, good. We'll be making a quick stop at a more central station for refueling and stocking up for more Terran adequate supplies. Uh, 27 standard minutes, you hear? Aye, aye, Cap. Simone acknowledges before looking down to Chuck. Hope a little court martial doesn't change things for you. Oh, of course not. I'm sure you had your reasons, she says with a soft bounce. Yeah, I did. The Terran confirms, doing her best not to sound bitter. I should go check on my clothes. Uh, make sure I'm set for escorting you. Simone turns and walks out to the bridge. When the door's shut, Chucknuck looks at Chuck expectantly. What? She asks. How much does she know? Oh, nothing yet. She seems keen on not asking why we need her. She might be under the impression this will be an easy job. You know as well as I do that running won't work forever. Last time one of them found us. Yes, I know. If we're lucky, the pressure will die down when they spot some moan. Chuck's lower arms cross. And if it makes them double down on their efforts instead? Chuck not warns as he leans forward. Then we best hope our new security chief is good at our job. Indeed. Simone stands by as the ramp lowers. As soon as contact is made, the terror marches down, sweeping her eyes around. Dark workers dressed in orange markers zigzag around moving power cells, transporting crates and running check of diagnostics on landed vessels. Anyone who catches sight of her shows a range of caution, fear, and outright avoidance. Her eyes land on a nearby orange drought, Vicroy. They stand frozen, holding a data pad in their tentacle trunk. Simone waves at them expectantly and tilts her head back at the ship. After another bundle of awkward moments pass, Simone opens her comms. Hey, Bo Peep, our check and inspector friend is shitting their pants at me. You should come on down and break the bread. I'd rather not cause a scene. Uh, oh, I think I understand. On my way. The voice is so clear through the comms that if Simone didn't know better, she believed the Callie stood invisible right in front of her. Fancy as fuck. Simone mutters impressed. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm what? Chuck asks perplexed. Ah, oh, shit, sorry. I uh, forgot to disconnect the... Simone immediately responds with a jolt, but stops and chuckles. Nah, that works too. Carry on. After having the most one-sided standoff of all time with the terrified dock worker, Chuck drops down the ramp with a noticeable prance in her step. Seeing Simone immediately, she gives a wave, which is returned by a prompt thumb to the inspector. The Callie looks over and makes her way toward the dedicated 12-foot-tall statue. Uh, greetings. Is there a problem with the inspection? I'll be more than happy to speak with the Dogmaster if something's amiss, she asks, which finally elicits a response. Is that Terran with you? It asks in a low, bassy thrumming. Of course. Simone is our chief of security. She's really nice and would be happy to sign off the datapad for you. Uh, that won't be necessary. Have a lovely stay at Kamoi Station, the Enya replies as it inputs something into the datapad and quickly saunters away. Oh, alright, thank you. She calls after the creature, before looking over to the unbothered Simone. Ready for some shopping? The Terran asks with an amused shrug. Of course! This is going to be so fun! Chuck proclaims as she skips up to Simone. What's got you so winded up? It's just going to be a few ration crates, Simone says with an amused smile. Ow, oh, can we explore a little? I hear this station has some amazing parks and restaurants. Chuck pleads, bowsing up and down like a caffeinated gazelle. I don't know. Judging by that welcome, it may be best for me to spend as little time out for all to see. Simone resists. Oh, please, Simone. Just walk next to me and everything will be okay. If anyone gives you trouble, I'll sort it out, I promise. Chuck begs, as she clasps her appendages together. Biting her cheek a little harder than usual, Simone lightly shakes her head. It's just not a good idea, Chuck. She utters, feeling rather guilty. Like a dirty cheater... 
Chuck clasps her upper hands onto Simone's and opens her crimson eyes as wide as physically possible. Please? She chirps softly. Simone releases a gallon of air from her lungs and slumps her shoulders. For the record, this is clear manipulation. You're not as crafty as you think, but fine. We'll take an extra hour to run around. <sighs> Simone is cut off as Chuck embraces her with her forearms. The impact is pitiful, but the energy is there. Thank you, thank you. The gully squeaks with her face buried in the tennis jacket. Simone lifts her hand outward to show anyone who may be watching that the galley initiated this. Sure, yeah, alright, okay, just, um, let's get going then, Simone stammers, feeling her face flush. Chuck holds the hug for a few seconds extra before stepping back. Maybe we can buy ourselves some more time if we hurry to order the rations. Chuck takes hold of Simone's hand with two of hers and pulls towards the station entryway. The last thing these people need is a Terran bulldozing through their station, Simone says, conceding to the tugs at a leisurely pace. The two enter the main plaza where a market is set up for tourists and visitors. Simone sighs, seeing Chuck's eyes light up even more. Seriously? They flash a red glow. They would have to walk through the market in order to get to the supply kiosks. Stars help me. Simone silently beseeches as they enter the fray. Oh, Simone! Look at that, by the stars! Oh. Aren't they pretty? Yeah, well... Oh! What do you think those are? Huh. Dunno. Well, that just looks uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. They still make these? I haven't seen one since I was a child. Neat. Oh my goodness, I think they're still alive. What do you know? <gasps> I'm getting us these! Simone is snapped out from her autopilot at this. Wait, what? The Terran focuses as the caddy leans to a stool with gleaming, circular stone jewellery. Chuck inspects the array, then turns back, leaning right up into Simone's face, giving it the same treatment. Can I... help you? Simone asks. Oh, got it! Chuck declares, turning back. Before Simone can put a stop to it, the caddy purchases two items and begins leading through the market, now unfazed by the contents offered. When they finally break free from the other side, Chuck lets go of Simone and manoeuvres her purchase behind her back to face the Terran. The Callie's face is innocently coy, and she can't help but bounce a bit in anticipation. You are a goddamn handful. Simone notifies, drained. Thank you. Now lean down and close your eyes, she chirps. Simone narrows her eyes and raises one of their tuft hairs. You know what happened to the last pretty face who told me to do that? I can make my eyes big again if that helps. Simone first glances around wearingly. You're really pushing your luck today, the Terran complies. She feels hands brushed by her neck, and hears a small following click. Just a second. Okay, open up. Chuck permits. Simone opens her eyes, seeing the caddy wearing a new necklace. It's a gunmetal chain with a small marbled emerald stone as the focal point. Looking down, Simone inspects a very similar necklace, but the stone is a crimson with faint black swirls. What's this about? Simone asks, inspecting the stone in her hand. They are memories made. Huh? It's a tradition of my people. Like souvenirs or pictures, these are to bring us back to this moment so we will never forget. A physical piece from a pastime of great importance, like a child's birth or a great victory at a sporting event, things like that. Chuck explains expectantly. So this is for a shopping trip? Simone guesses. Chuck tilts her head. Of course, but not just that. It's our first official day working together. I hope to have many more and be able to look back because... Well, it's stupid. Chuck gradually looks to the ground, caving in on herself a little. What's stupid? Simone asks softly. It's a... It's also a promise for a future. A future to look forward to. A future I probably won't have. Chuck admits in little more than a whisper. Now concerned, Simone leans back down. What makes you say that, Chuck? The Callie takes a breath before answering. There are some extraordinarily dangerous people hunting me. I've been on the run for three standard years now. I thought I could just keep running, but there was a close call not too long ago. They are closing in, I know it. My time is running out, it seems. That's why you were so desperate to hire a death welder. Chuck nods. 
I apologize. I should have been more upfront, but everything happened so fast and... Simone silences Jack's mouth with her pointer finger. Tell me all about it when we get back on the ship. Simone hushes. Glancing back at the market, the Terran feels shame infests her chest. This poor girl is expecting to get capped any day now, and wants to make the most of what time she has left. And I checked out like an asshat. Frankly, Simone musters her courage. She stands straight, blowing her hands on her hips. Frankly, I'm just insulted, she declares, not giving a shit about maintaining her volume. Chuck looks up at her, shocked and scared. Simone, I'm sorry, I... Chuck is cut off again by Simone dramatically raising her halting hand. You hired me to protect you and you're still scared? When am I, chop liver? No, I'm the biggest, meanest, deaf a bitch out there, and yet you doubt me? Simone lifts both her arms in the air as if to brace the stars above. Chuck stares up, planting her hand on her chest as her twin hearts pound. Ma'am, are you alright? A bold bystander asks the poor Callie being shouted at by a deranged Terran. Simone points at the bystander, causing him to flinch away. You bet your turquoise ass she is, and that's how it's going to stay, Simone boasts, as she strolls around Chuck. Then with the utmost care, scoops out the flustered Callie in her Terran arms. How about we go to the park now, and then you can take me wherever you want from there, she says, maintaining the performing bravado. The Callie's eyes definitely flick as a glowing red. Yes, please. The Terran carries off the Callie, passing the supply kiosk by. All the while, the crowd that bore witness to the strange occurrence madly debate whether or not to call station security.